The Razorback basketball team gets Ricky Council to transfer in. How in the world do they have enough scholarships for all these players that they're bringing in? Also, a uh, former Razorback football coach resigns from his spot. And let's get you ready for the weekend. This is the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. <laughs> Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 The Buzz. Dot com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Friday. Uh, I'm recording the podcast a little bit later than what I normally am. I had some stuff come up this morning, so I didn't want to go the full day without having some sort of podcast on some of the big news going on in Razorback football. So, uh, it's, yeah, it's a little later. I apologize, but still got to get it done. And uh, with the big news coming out today, which is kind of like a twofold of something that we you know could have talked about yesterday and intertwining it uh, with the announcement of Razorback basketball having Jackson Robinson transferring out he enters into the portal i think that that was something to where at least over the past couple of months or maybe just a month and a half i was like there's got to be more players leaving like i'm sorry there's nothing against jackson robinson or kamani johnson or devo davis but i was like Muss is really trying to build something here on top of this team where he could look at it as this being his one chance not saying it'll be the only opportunity but his one best chance of really winning a national title and so he's going to make sure that he can have all the things put into place on this roster to make that possible. And we knew that there was names getting thrown into the mix of other players that he was searching for or looking at in the transfer portal. And Ricky Council was definitely one of them. And so whenever Jackson Robinson decided to enter into the transfer portal, I think most Razorback fans as well as media people that uh, were covering this kind of knew, all right, he's leaving not because of it's a decision on his own, but more like, hey, Arkansas told him that they need that extra scholarship. Now, those of you that are freaking out and thinking about Jackson Robinson, at least to my understanding, yeah, it's past the deadline to enter into the transfer portal to where you can be immediately eligible. But I'm pretty sure you can still be immediately eligible to play for your next school, just as long as the school, your previous spot, signs a waiver or allows the transfer to happen without that. And I don't think Arkansas or Eric Musselman will have any sort of problem with Jackson Robinson transferring to another school and being able to play immediately. So uh, before, at least that's my understanding. Could be wrong. That's my understanding. But either way, uh, the big news happened, of course, with Ricky Council the fourth. He is now officially an Arkansas Razorback, and this is according to uh, Curtis Wilkerson of uh, Hawksports.com. Says that he chose the Razorbacks over a group of finalists that include Alabama, Georgia Tech, Mississippi State, Kansas, and Iowa State. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, uh, amount of teams there, especially uh, the Kansas angle there, too. That's pretty big. And he's going to have three years of eligibility left. So it's not like he's just a, a one-year type player. He will have three years of Arkansas uh, decides to, to keep him around. <laughs> you never know, ever changing rosters and everything like that. But he's 6'6", 205 pounds. He's a native out of uh, Durham, North Carolina. And he submitted his name into the NBA draft pool uh, earlier this year, back on April 21st. But then he also said that he's going to explore his transfer options uh, on that day as well. And Arkansas, as soon as that was announced, apparently got prioritized right away where they're like, we want this kid. We want this kid bad. After trimming his list from six suitors, to, uh, from a uh, list of suitors to six earlier last week, Council quickly set up a visit to uh, Fayetteville and was on campus with his family Thursday through Saturday this past weekend. With Thursday's news that Jackson Robinson was entering into the transfer portal, a spot opened up for Council to join the fold, and boom, there you have it. Uh, Arkansas currently projects to be at the NCAA limit of 13 scholarships without accounting for all SEC Jalen Williams, uh, which, of course, we know that this decision is pending. But we'll know more uh, by June 1st because that's when the decision has to be made. So as of right now, if Jalen Williams did not come back, Arkansas is still at capacity. So uh, Council, who, of course, tra transfers in, also with Trey Wade, who transferred in from Wichita State, he was named the AAC Sixth Man of the Year in 2021 and 2022, he averaged 12 points, five and a half rebounds, nearly two assists, and one steal per game, shooting 43% from the field, 30% from beyond the arc, and 85% from the free throw line for Wichita State. He scored in double figures 17 times on the season, including a season-high 31 against UC UCF 
on January 26th. Also logged a pair of double doubles, uh, including a 17.10 rebound uh, effort against number 14 Houston back in February 20, uh, 20th. He was a three star coming out of high school at the 2019 class. He's number 403rd player in the country, and he quickly found a role uh, with Wichita State. And apparently, he also offers a lot of flexibility to the Hogs uh, as someone who can who has comfort level of coming off the bench because obviously being the sixth man of the year. It's going to add a lot of value to that length, uh, high level of athleticism, and a shot creation to a young but widely talented backcourt. So uh, he's the 11th. This is stupid. He's the 11th newcomer to enter in the mix for the Arkansas program. And uh, they know that it's going to be crazy as he's joining Trevon Brazil, who came from Missouri, Jalen Graham from Arizona State, Makai Mitchell, and Mikel Mitchell from Rhode Island, as far as those transfers, and then add in all the recruits. I can't even keep up. There's so many dadgum players here on this Arkansas Razorback roster. So a lot of you, though, are probably, uh, you know, reading about it or hearing about this player and saying, OK, so what is this? What is this role? What, what's going on and everything like that? Well, here's just my thoughts on the fact that like why they added him and also, you know, why they you know went a route of getting this type of player. Well, why they added him. And, and, and then again, this is just my theory behind it all. Is that if you think about it, like between all the transfers and all the incoming high school players, or at least the major ones, these are guys that are expecting to start. But you can only start five. Like you're not bringing in three McDonald's All Americans where they don't think that they're going to start, and they may not all start. I'm not trying to say that that they have to start or else it's bad, but that's their expectation. You got these transfers that are coming in, and we just list them off: Missouri. Arizona State, Rhode Island, those are guys that are talented and highly sought after that are going to expect to start once they get on campus. They all won't start, but they expect to. So when you have a bunch of guys that are really talented and they have the expectation that they're going to come in and start right away, that can sometimes be problematic when you're trying to figure out who's going to be that role guy coming off the bench. You know, who's going to be that spark Who's going to be our sixth man that we have our starting five, but when this guy comes in, we feel good about him continuing on and, and making things happen and making things possible. Who's going to be that guy? Well, they don't have one, at least uh, not one set in stone. It could develop into that, but not set in stone. Devo did that a little bit last year, but I'm, I'm still needing to let's see a lot more out of Devo this year. Um, Kamani Johnson, I don't think it's going to be much of a factor, but they needed somebody who's comfortable in that role. And so when you go after somebody like Ricky Council the fourth, he steps on campus kind of knowing, all right, I came off the bench at Wichita State. I was sixth man of the year. I'm coming in with these insanely talented players going to be on my team with the Razorbacks. I'm not expecting to start. I'm totally fine and totally comfortable coming in as a sixth man because that's what I did at Wichita State. I was successful at it. And I can be successful at Arkansas that way too. You know, we always talk about with the starting five and who's going to play and everything, but people really undervalue the uh, importance of having a sixth man, having someone who's comfortable enough in that role. Because listen, we all want to play. Everybody wants to play. Everyone wants to start. They want to be the starter. They want to have their name announced at Bud Walton Arena when the fireworks are going off. Like they're, they are all for that. We all are all for that. That's what we all want. But it's just not reality. And so you have to be able to find guys, and in this case, maybe just one guy that's completely and totally fine and saying, yeah, I'm, I'll am i be on the bench if you guys need me. Just let me know. And when you call my name, I'll be ready. You want those guys. And to have this type of player who's comfortable in that role to come in with this talented team, I think is going to be a, a tremendous fit for what Eric Musselman in Arkansas is trying to do. You can even add into the mix of possibly – uh, you know, throwing in maybe some other guys that develop into that role too, maybe feel a little bit more comfortable with it. Possibly that. Who knows? Like, there, there's just there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of options here. But you have a guy 6'6", 200 pounds. He's a freak athlete. He's great at rebounding. He has a pretty good shot on him. He hits a lot of free throws. He's he's that wing player that you can count on to come in and then just uh, be able to provide a big spark. So. When I, when I heard this news about Ricky Council and then just seeing the reaction that so many people had, it was kind of like they were confused. They were like, oh, my gosh, what do we do here? How are we going to maintain these, these scholarships? Well, here, here's the facts. Here's the facts, folks. And I'm going to be 
completely and totally honest with you about my opinion. I've kind of alluded to this before, and I'm going to say it again. I do not think Jalen Williams comes back. I, I'm not saying that that's like me, you know, really going out on a limb or, you know, trying to have this hot take because I think a lot of you have probably heard from people or maybe think yourselves that he's not coming back. But that's my feeling. I don't think Jalen Williams is coming back. And I think Eric Musselman has prepared this team and formulated this team to where it's going to be a team without Jalen Williams. Now, obviously, we all would love to have Jalen Williams back. And if Jalen Williams was to decide to come back, Arkansas would be probably the preseason number one, maybe number two team in the country, without a doubt, no questions asked. And they would be one of the odds-on favorites to win the national championship. 100% that would be the case. But if Jalen Williams doesn't come back, you know what this team, you know what the ceiling is going to be for this team next year? Winning a national championship. This team's going to be good enough to where they can be able to win a national championship without Jalen Williams. You'd love for him to be on there, but they're perfectly capable of it. You won't have as many people believing it in the beginning part of the season. No question. But when it comes to Jalen Williams being on this team next season or not being on this team next season, you're still going to be fine. You're still going to be a really great team. That's really going to be excited. And you brought in so much help, especially all these six nine dudes. That it's just going to be fine. So, if and when Jalen Williams decides to move on and go into the NBA, Razorback fans just need to say thank you so much, Jalen. The past two years you gave us were awesome. Back to back elite eights. We wish you nothing but the best in the NBA because he's been an he's been awesome. And I think that uh, Razorback fans will understand that. But don't be down on your own team. Don't think that all is lost and that you don't you're not going to get it done. You'll still be a really good team. You're still going to be right there in the mix, and people are going to start picking you to win the SEC next year and maybe even win a national championship. So just remember that, folks, and don't freak out too much about it, all right? Uh, I got to tell you about Bill Bar. Now, listen, Bill Bar just sent me their birthday cake puffs, which, you know, then whenever I have a new flavor or a new type of bar, I want to try them out. And we know that, like, there's something special about birthday cake. You know, have you ever, like, gone to a birthday, and it's like you're sitting there and you see the icing, you're just kind of like, I'm going to get your finger and, or no, like anyone notices or something like that. I, we, maybe I'm the only one that done it, like at my nephew's birthday parties. But either way, there's just something so good about that. Well, Bill Bar has you taken care of when it comes to having that great taste, but something that's a little bit healthier where it's not just eating a thing of sugar. 17 grams of protein in this sucker, all right? 17 grams of protein, only 150 calories, and I just had one. It literally tastes like birthday cake. It's incredible. And I've told you so many times about Bill Bar and how healthy it is and convenient. You got to try out the birthday cake buffs. It's one of my favorites. Like I, I have a lot of different ones that I prefer. This one's definitely one of my favorites. You will not be disappointed. So go over to built.com, enter promo code locked15, and you'll get 15% off your next order. It's as simple as that. Promo code locked15 at built.com, 15% off your next order. Check out those birthday cake puffs. I promise you, folks, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. You are locked on Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so continuing on our uh, podcast here, and you know, a lot of people have already heard about this and had some fun with this, and I'm going to have some fun with it too. And some of you may even get tired of it. Some of you may be like, okay, I don't want, we don't want to hear about this. This is over. This is done with. But no, I'm going to bring it up, and I'm going to tell you why I'm going to continue to bring things up like this. So former Arkansas coach Chad Morris. We all know him. Uh, he's officially resigned as the Allen, Texas high school football coach after just one season. School announced on Friday. Morse's departure was first reported by Dave Campbell's Texas football. The Allen High School SISD confirmed that Morris had been presented with the opportunity to return to the college football ranks. He says, quote, I am so thankful for Allen ISD for a chance to work with an amazing group of student athletes and a dedicated coaching staff. Allen is a top-notch school system that prioritizes students above all else. Okay. Morris was hired as one of the flashiest high school hires in recent memory at the alma mater of stars of like Kyler Murray, Greg Little, and others. Uh, but the Texas native ranked among the most beloved among high school coaches all time after he led two different high school programs to combine three state championships. Notably, Morris went to back-to-back -back state championships at Austin-based Lake Travis with her heralded quarterback Garrett Gilbert in 08 and 09. One year later, he took the offense coordinator job at Tulsa, and he went to Clemson, then went to SMU, and then 
he went to Arkansas. Now, after Arkansas, of course, he went to be the Auburn offensive coordinator for one year and kind of led and helped Gus Malzahn get fired that year because the offense was abysmal. And then he goes into Allen, Texas, and now he's moving on there from well for uh, return to college football opportunities. Now, when I saw this, I laughed because I'm like, this, there's no way that this dude left. He, he got fired. They got they wanted him out and they wanted him gone. He, he lost. Th- he went 11 and three, which is funny since I like, get this. They went 11 and three and it was the worst record at Allen since 2005. 11 and three. What is this? Alabama football for crying out loud. Like, that's just stupid. So they fired him because he lost three games. Can't happen at Allen. Um, but that's, that's at least what I'm thinking. Like you, you don't just leave and what college football opportunities are you talking about, bro? Like you talked about how much you loved high school and all that. And who knows, maybe you'll prove me wrong. Maybe you'll get like a head coaching job somewhere. But, uh, at the end of the day, like I was having some fun with this and then people were like, Hey, why do you keep bringing them up? Why do you keep doing, well, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me play to you for real talk here. And you can disagree. That's fine. You can think I'm over the top and ridiculous and dramatic and all that. That's fine. Chad Morris still to this day deserves every bit of ridicule and criticism that goes his way. 100%. And he'll never not deserve it. Because what Chad Morris did at Arkansas cannot be forgiven. It would have been just one thing. It would have been bad enough if he was just a terrible coach. Like it would have been bad enough if they if he went 4 and 18 and the team was terrible and he got fired. Like that it would have it, but he but he tried. But if you add up all the things about Chad Morris and the elements of like what he did as, as a coach with starting right off the bat, not bringing his family to Arkansas. Some people don't think it's a big deal. I do. I'm sorry. They're like, oh, well, his kid was, you know, in T- Dallas, Texas, and he was a number one or really good player and all that stuff. Okay, well, if he goes Northwest Arkansas, does that mean suddenly he's gonna not going to be as good of a player? The scholarships aren't going to be there? No, that was an excuse. They didn't want to come up. They didn't buy in. The family didn't want to come up here. His wife didn't want to come up here. I don't even know if his wife did a load of laundry in in, in Arkansas. So, like, that right there was a red flag that just bothered me in the beginning because I'm like, dude, this is not just a job that you can just kind of, like, you know, wait on. You and your family got to be all in. This is the SEC. You got to be here. So that was bad within itself. And then he first gets here, and then he, like, tells all of Brett Bielma's players basically that, hey, we're not – worried about you do whatever you want i'm just waiting to get my guys in here we're going to rep- we're going to replace all of you uh and you know there's not going to be a place for you on this football team like he said that like first right off the bat so you already like completely isolated the majority of your team where they didn't want to play for you and then his constant like rhetoric of hashtag stuff you know left lane hammer down full tilt boogie uh iron sharpens iron and you know, just stupid stuff like that. And then just the abysmal excuses he'd give his terrible press conferences, his terrible hires, like everything was bad. And then like that was year one and then they replace everybody and then the quarterbacks leave and everything. And then you bring it in. And then he like takes away all the Razorback gear from the players to try to say, I'm going to mental make you mentally tough, which was dumb and it didn't work at all. And it was more about him and, uh, and the list goes on and on for all the things we could bring up and just trash Chad Morris for because he deserves every bit of it and all of that. But adding in all that into the mix, and then when he gets fired, not even like putting out a statement or anything like thanking the fans. You may see that as trivial, but I see it as a, a, a mark of somebody who's who's kind of a coward. Because, listen... The U of A paid you a lot of money, millions of dollars. They're going to continue to pay you millions of dollars in a buyout. They gave you everything you needed to succeed. They let you hire the coaches you needed. They pay them the salaries. You had a practice facility. You had a north end zone expansion going on. You had everything. You're in the SEC. They gave you everything. The fans gave you everything. They were showing up with you to give you everything. Like all of that was going on and everybody was just trying to make it uh, as good as they could for you and try to be as welcoming to you as possible and trying to get you to be their head guy, their Razorback coach, because they want you to succeed. They gave that to you, all of that to you. And you were paid them by going four and 18 and completely tanking the program beyond belief. And you couldn't even have the audacity 
You couldn't even man up and put out anything saying, I appreciate the fans. I appreciate the opportunity, anything like that. What that shows me is that you didn't care. You didn't care about this place. You didn't care to be here. You never wanted to be here. You took it because you thought it was like, you know, a job in the SEC, but you thought you could like have one foot in, one foot out. Like you're going to go home and see your son play football on Friday nights before games. Nah, sorry. Everybody should be able to do that. But when you're a major college football head coach, you made the decision to have him stay in Dallas. You could have brought him up to Fayetteville and seen him a lot easier. But you made that decision. So I just have no sympathy for Chad Morris, and I wish him nothing but the worst in his career. I, I'm sorry, but there's just way too many things that happen that I hate and I despise about him and what he did. And like, there's not a coach... And I'm someone who can't stand Houston Nut. Like I hate Houston Nut, but I I will take Houston Nut a million ways to Sunday before I would ever take Chad Morris. You know, it's like one of those things where uh, it reminds me of The Office, but it's kind of like you know he's like, uh, you know, say what you want about Houston Nut, or say what uh, yeah, say whatever you want about Houston Nut, but he would never do that. What Chad Morris did, so. I just have a major problem with him. I always will have a problem with him, and I hope he fails at every turn when it comes to his coaching career. So there you have it. Our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. For all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures, check out betonline.net, which is your continued source for all sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs and esports and so much more. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions at betonline.net, where the game starts. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, appreciate everybody listening into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel. Next Monday, have a great weekend, everybody. We will see you then.